Um, let's talk about Heretic next. Um, in a busy month, it was like, what movies to be included? And this is probably one of the smaller movies, but I did want to talk through this because it's an interesting movie. Written and directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods. Uh, it stars Hugh Grant, which is kind of the headline here. It's his second horror after 1988. Uh, the Lair of the White Worm. So he's kind of dabbling in uh, an interesting phase in his career where he's uh, taking the Hugh Grant character that we all know and love him, and he's just twisting him in different directions. Like we saw him in Dungeons and Dragons or Paddington 2, trying to be a villain uh, and now he's in the horror realm here we open in this movie on two young mormon missionaries uh, awkwardly making conversations as they try to convert people which is how they end up at the door of the theologian um you grant where things begin to take a turn um want to get your thoughts on this i just want to talk about this movie with you because i think there's it, it's an interesting one yeah, it sounds very dark. I think we need a joke for some levity. Um, so so we, you mentioned Mormons. Obviously, they're also called Latter-day Saints. So our joke, ready? What, what you get when you cross LDS with LSD? What? A high priest. Oh, God. Tears I of sadness. I, I'll give you. I think. I No, actually, no. You're not. You're, you're two and You're two and two. You're two and two. <laughs> Yeah, um, this was uh, an interesting one because I think you know I, I've been hearing about this one for for quite a while because um, there was a lot of talk about like this is this is Hugh Grant in like dark dark territory. I mean, Hugh Grant is honestly having like the most interesting like resurgence as an actor in the last yes. couple of years, where he's just like I'm just going to do weird roles now because you know he's kind of at an age where he you know he can't still be what he was in like the nineties. So he's just doing really interesting roles, and this is one of his most interesting ones to date, I would say. Mm. Um, it's it's uh, comes from the guys who gave us a quiet place, uh, Scott Beck and, and and Brian Woods, and it's it kind of becomes a weird kind of theological debate of yeah. a horror film. Um, I want to talk about uh, bring it back to uh, we talked about uh, Speak No Evil uh, a couple months ago, and there was kind of a running thread in that of like, how how polite do we have to be here? It would have been the polite thing to you know just you know. I, to stay here but maybe we should have left and there's kind of a, a running kind of idea of that in here as well where they're just like these two mormons kind of get to a situation where they're like we, we could have got out of this if we had been a bit more forceful and now we're kind of stuck in this situation um i i would say i really enjoyed it i i think it does run out of steam as a movie um but i do think that there's a lot of interesting stuff in it um it's sort of, <laughs> there are times where it kind of feels like your atheist mate just ragging on God a little bit. Like, we've heard it. <laughs> we've heard it, man. We know. Like, you don't have to come into the, I get, you know, there's a lot of that where it's like, oh, well, did you know that this symbol and this symbol came from this religion? And you're like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah okay. And they keep kind of going on a tangent a little bit. It's like, well, do you believe in God? Oh, well, guess what? There's loads of gods. Oh, you only believe, oh, you know. Um, although it's, it's done incredibly well uh, and entertainingly, there's a, I think the analogy about Monopoly is going to be, uh, that's in this film is going to be probably used by atheists for for years to come hmm. um <laughs> maybe annoyingly uh to the point that it becomes uh you know uh bad in and of, of itself i thought the the two uh female leads sophie thatcher and chloe east were excellent yes. in this um again i can't say i was familiar with their work I, I think i'd seen one of them or two or maybe the other one something as well but again uh they're they're you know kind of burgeoning actors and they you wouldn't know it from watching them here uh i thought they just had a really great um Again, I think they, they did a, a role that could so easily could have been a nothing role, which is that, oh, you're just be scared, <laughs> you know, um, and it's not that they kind of have a, a, enough uh, kind of motivation and self-preservation that they make really uh, for really, really interesting kind of heroines. Uh, Hugh Grant is, again, he's in a weird way leaning into the Hugh Grant we kind of know. Yeah. In that it's it's Hugh Grant as like kind, you know, affable Englishman. But he's doing it in a kind of a sinister way where he's like being nice, but kind of being overly nice and yeah. kind of prodding at you. And yeah, I, I he was excellent. I mean, he's just must love his career right now. Um certainly I'm enjoying the work he's putting out. Like um uh there's not much you can say about the kind of specifics of it because there's a, a lot of spoilery stuff in this um i will say i i saw the trailer for this a couple months ago and the, the, there was one thing in the trailer that they revealed like straight away and i was just like i'm in 
<laughs> like yeah. there's a reveal, a reveal about what you know the kind of the the reason they enter the house and kind of a, a revelation about that. That I was just like, well, that's all I need. And you kind of think it's going one way based on that, and it never really does. It it kind of it kind of just keeps furthering a kind of a lie and kind of continues to, for them to to question their faith, um, which is interesting. Towards the end, it, it takes you know no pun intended, kind of a, a leap of faith where it gets a little bit weird. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure I entirely enjoyed that bit. I I feel like it kind of got to a point where they kind of played their cards, uh, uh, you know, a bit too much, and they didn't really know what to do it. So they just figured they kind of had to find an ending that somewhat worked. And I don't think I necessarily loved it. Um, the one of the bigger surprises. This is, by the way, this isn't a twist. Tover Grace was in this. I was like, what? What? The yeah. <laughs> and and it was like old man Tover Grace. I was like, Tover Grace, what happened to you? <laughs> but yeah, no, I would think this is a a really uh, worthwhile watch. I think it's one that like when it gets onto streaming would probably be a, a big hit. Um, but yeah, no, it's a very, very competent horror film um, that that kind of has something to say uh, and has some some intellect about it. Um, it's not the kind of scary horror you might expect from A24, I would say. Um, but it is a very kind of a tense psychological thriller uh, about religion, which sounds weird to say. But yeah, no, I think it totally worked. In a packed month, we had some behind the scenes conversations about what do we cover and what do we not? And, and this came up because, again, it's not going to be the movie of the year or anything like that as well like and but I, I i definitely wanted to make time to discuss it because i have rants so often on here about hating shit horror that i want to give credit for horror that tries to do something different and that's what this does um you grant weaponizing his traditional affability in multiple different ways and being so game with all of it is amazing and fascinating. And he is one of these actors now that at this point, when you put you Grant on the poster, I'm there because he's so interesting in what he's doing. He's having him and Nicholas Cage are having very interesting kind of similar, um, postscripts to the kind of their peak i suppose in that they're playing with the tropes that people like and they're they're, they're happy to kind of go with it and, and it's working almost every single time he's like he's so perfectly suited suited to horror in so many different ways that you wouldn't have thought of until you saw it happening like he's monologuing at one stage and holding court like the best teacher you've ever had. Uh, and then he's terrifying you in the next second. And then he's just deflating all the tension with hilarity. And he's just toying with you and playing with you. And he's doing nothing but talking and being you, Grant. Like that's, he's doing it all with just being you, Grant. And, and he's achieving all of that. It is incredible uh to see someone just flex so much and again yeah credit to it is essentially a, a three horse kind of film it's sophie thatcher and chloe east are fantastic in this you instantly understand their characters you get it they nail it and they never like they never stray from that as well the script manages to accommodate all of that as well but they they hold their own uh in there with an, an all-time or horror performance here the debate and dialogue in the first 45 minutes, I was like, if they can land this plane, this is going to be one of my favorite horrors ever. It was fascinating. Um, I agree with kind of the point you're making. It is very much like, yeah, but bro, like I've thought about this. I've read a book and saw one documentary on it. Yeah, there is an element of that, but that's more like the script has that element, the performance and yeah. the engagement of it and the, the push and pull of it all. And the uh, characters having to make decisions of, do I agree just to go along with it or do I not? Like, how do I go? And just constant there. Um, there is substance to the debate and they, they let all sides air out where it's like essentially one character at one time makes the point that you made where it's like, yeah, you're just saying the same shit we hear all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But the natural push pull just adds to the tension as it builds and builds and builds. Um, I loved also the use of iterations throughout all of this. And like, that was a point in the movie that they made, but, the movie does it itself in terms of like how it constantly replays the same things as well. I thought that was fascinating too. Um, it didn't fully land the plane and much like yourself, I thought again, they, they, 
they set up this amazing concept and then they just didn't know how to end it. Um, but I was satisfied with where they got while also understanding that I'm like, ah, there, there is a point where it goes from tense to spooky. And that's when you're like, okay, right. You know, yeah. you, you didn't get there, but I admire that you tried. Um, but Hugh Grant gives one of the best performances I've ever seen in the horror and it deserves the credit. I, I agree that I think as well. Um, I think when it hits streaming, I think it's something that horror fans should definitely check out. And I think it's going to find a really big cult following and it deserves it. It's an excellent attempt. Um, again, it doesn't fully work, um, but it never ruins the movie either. It, it, it gets away with it. Um, 